What's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and talk you through balancing a flight control. If this is your first video, I am Bryce. I'm your favorite AMP, IA, and Part 147 instructor. And I've been doing videos on common practical projects that you might get as a AMP student when you go and take your airframe and power plant test at a DME or designated mechanics examiner. So if balancing a flight control is something that interests you, please stick around. Real quick, right before I get started, I do want to make a point to stress that this is for demonstration purposes, and this video is in no way to serve as a how-to or a step-by-step -step guide on how to balance flight controls. You need to be referring to your manuals for that, you need to be referring to your instructions for that, and if you're an actual aircraft mechanic doing this, then you need to make sure you've had some kind of training on this, not just watching the guy from YouTube, but maybe you're an experimental aircraft builder, maybe you're a pilot that's curious, or maybe you are a student who's getting ready to to go test to become an airframe and power plant technician. So this video is what you're looking for. This video is gonna help guide you in how to do that. So I'm gonna go get set up and we'll see how this goes. First thing is first, and I need to do a better job of stressing this in my videos. Manual, 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 procedure, 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 procedure. Especially if you're at a DME, if you're taking your oral and practical test, he's gonna wanna see that you pull out a procedure or you'll fail. Now, weirdly enough, in the Cessna, manual and the Cessna 150 manual this is a Cessna 150 flap it's the only flight control I have over here you could do an aileron you could do an elevator everything's going to be the same but it gives you a procedure for balancing the flight controls now it does two things not only does it give you a procedure for it but it also gives you the tooling they even have I think it's a service letter where they tell you how to make these things um, how to make a balancing beam, how to make the arbors, how to make the knife edge, how to do all these things to make this tool so you can balance your flight controls. And then I'm not going to go through it like crazy, crazy, but here is the uh, here is the procedure here. And here's that balance beam. I'll show you ours. This is one that we made, obviously. I've got my aluminum beam. It's marked at the center, and then it has little one-inch increments here we've already set it up for this flap you could set it up for whatever you want the key to this though is you want the back of it centered you want the hinge directly over the hinge line of the flight control and then you actually want it perpendicular to the cord line of this flight control you don't want it uh, what's the word I'm looking for you don't want it tilting up or tilting down and I'll explain that here in just a second so now that I'm ready to balance the flight control, I have my procedure over there, I've read it. The first thing I need to do is balance this beam. So I'm actually gonna take the beam off. I've got it set so that this back hinge places my, uh, my hinge point directly over the center line of the flight control. Now this is a flap. You wouldn't normally balance a flap. You'd balance like an aileron or an elevator, but I'm gonna set my balance beam on the table, resting on its center point and make sure that it's balanced. Now you wanna to try to get it as close to center as you can, and I'm trying to very gently do this, and it should, just like a teeter-totter, balance itself right in the middle. And you can see it's balanced. It's not really touching at the, well, it slowly went down. It, it's close enough is what I should say. If I sort of just bump this ever so slightly back to center, it'll stay there for a good while. I mean, Ah, this is harder than it looks. There we go. Okay, so the arbor is balanced. So now that the arbor is balanced, I've balanced this weight here with the washers here. That's what the manual tells me to do. It tells me to stack washers under this nut to balance the arbor for any given flight control. So I've got this arbor set up for this flight control, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it on here, put it back in the center, and then I'm going to take my one pound weight and I'm going to put it right here. Now this little dot is zero. This dot right here is over the hinge and I'm having to move it this way about that was too far let's see there we go so right there you can actually see it looks like it's pretty happily balanced it's not really going one way or the other that guy's not touching this guy's not touching. I'll go over to my level, which of course I can't see my level because it's underneath the weight. Ugh. Watch my stomach, let's see. It's pretty close to level if I just drop it down just a little more. See if it'll hold right here. If not, I'll try to get it to hold right here, but it's 
do that. Let me just push this. This is one of those very tedious things that just take your time. There's no need to rush. You wanna make sure you're doing this in a draft-free area with no fans on, with nothing pointed at it. There we go. It's balanced, right? Ah, uh, nope. Nope, just a little more. All right, I'm gonna do this off camera. Okay, sorry, I did that off camera. I just had to move the weight forward just a little bit. Um, let me see if I can get a light on that bubble level. I want you to see the bubble level on this. There we go. If you can sort of see the bubble is centered, the front of the arbor isn't touching the table, everything's leveled, which that's the other thing I did before I, I go any further. I do want to say you got to make sure that your knife edges are level. You want everything level, the table level, the arbors level, your hinge points level, 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 level. And then when everything is level, you'll know you're in balance. If it's crooked, if the arbors are crooked, if it's on an uneven floor, you're gonna struggle to get an accurate reading. So now that this is done, I'm gonna take this one pound off of here and I'm gonna calculate the moment. Now it's pretty easy since this is one pound, all I have to do it is all I have to do is multiply where it's sitting from the hinge point and that's my inch pounds. If it was 10 inches away, it's 10 inch pounds. If it was two inches away, it's two inch pounds. If it's this way, it's underbalanced. If it's forward, it's overbalanced. Now here's something important about that when I go to my table of limits. This table of limits has a lot of different aircraft in here because it's for a lot of different models. But you can see with Cessnas, a 150, the ailerons are 0, 0.0 to positive 0.8, or sorry, 8.94 inch pounds. The rudder is 41 inch pounds. And then the elevators are 35 and 29 inch pounds meaning that for a rudder or a aileron this weight could be 29 inches forward and it still falls in the range for a Cessna that might not be the case for a Beechcraft that might not be the case for a, uh, a Piper whatever it may be so when you're at your DME make sure you're reading the manual for your aircraft I'm using a Cessna manual because this is supposed to simulate a Cessna flight control. Like I said, you wouldn't normally balance a flap on a Cessna on other aircraft you might. So if it fell out of range, now what I would expect to do is I, I checked this and if there wasn't enough weight on the front, which is typically the problem, there's not enough lead in here because you've repainted it, you've added a bunch of graphics, so you've added weight to this side and now there's not enough weight on the forward side, then what I would do is I would come around over here and I would either add lead weights like you can see this lead weight screwed in here i would either add lead weights or add solder or see what the procedure says about adding weight to the flight control usually it's to add a piece of lead or something like that and you're always going to want to add more than you need and then take away from that piece of lead to balance the flight control either with a sanding disc by cutting it down whatever it may be but on your a lot of your general aviation aircraft i'm going to stress this You've got pretty big ranges for the balance of the flight controls. It's more of a check to see that they're falling within range. All right, everybody, that's pretty much going to do it. Uh, a couple of things to stress here at the end. Again, this is not the uh, an approval video. This is not meant to be as a step-by-step. -step. This is just how you can do it. Like I said, we use Cessna flight controls here at the school, but your DME might have a Piper, he might have a Beechcraft, so you need to make sure you're referring to those manuals if you're working on those aircraft. I will say, typically the balancing, flight control balancing, is under the structural repair section of the manual and not under the flight control sections of the manual, which is a little weird, but it's just where it ends up on a lot of the uh, older manuals, pre-ATA chapters, after ATA chapters were introduced, then they're actually typically in the flight control um, chapters. Piper sometimes are in a service bulletin or a service letter, just depends on your aircraft. Uh, but make sure if you're at a DME, you're asking for the procedure, you're saying, I need the procedure for this, and he'll give it to you. Um, if you're having trouble trouble finding the procedure, that you know, then you can tell him, hey, I'm, I'm not really able to find the procedure in the book that you gave me. Maybe he can help you, maybe he'll fail you. I don't know. But that is going to do it all for this video. If you found it helpful, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, uh, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I do have a brief uh, channel news on April, actually on March 31st, at some point in the middle of the night, I hit 10,000 subscribers on my channel. So if you're if you've been here for a minute, if you've been watching, if you're one of those 10 subscri 10,000 subscribers, I'd like to say from the bottom of my heart, 
thank you so much. It means the world to me. I never thought my channel would grow to this point. I really kind of thought I was going to be making these videos for myself, for my classroom, and for my students, but a lot of people have shown interest in it, so I'm going to start uh, putting a lot more effort into the channel on making short form videos, sort of revising some of my old videos, maybe refilming some of my old videos with updated information, being that it's been two years since I have started my channel. I'm gonna be doing a 10,000 subscriber AMA or an Ask Me Anything video on Sunday, so make sure you stick around for that. If you have a question you'd like to add to the AMA, make sure you drop it below in the comments, all of that good stuff. I could yammer on and yap for hours and hours back here in this electrical lab, but I'm not gonna do that. So. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, and as always, go build something and be easy.